there's a kind of nobility about horses that I think forms a special bond between them and us. It's assumed that horses were first used in warfare at least 5,000 years ago. The major use, I think, was probably pulling chariots at that stage because this was before the invention of saddles and stirrups and bridles and so on. It's believed that the Indians were the first to use stirrups and they had leather toe loops uh, and that was BC. Around uh, the first centuries AD the Chinese developed stirrups and the use of the stirrups spread across uh, the whole of Asia. The earliest depiction we have of Europeans using stirrups is at the Battle of Hastings, uh, where we have evidence through the Bayer tapestry that stirrups were used. The primary medieval horse used in warfare was the destriere. This is a French word which means war horse. Destriers, uh, contrary to popular belief, weren't enormous shire horses, but they were medium-sized horses, about 15 or so hands high, with very short necks but powerful backs, which meant they could carry the weight of the armour. Now, they're quite incredible animals because horses don't tend to like running into the fray where there's lots of swords and other horses and screaming men, so you needed to train them uh, and to get them prepared. Native Americans were not riding horses in the Americas prior to the Spanish conquests, primarily because any horses that had been in the Americas had died out eight to 10,000 years previously. Um, it was only with the Spanish conquistadors in the 16th century that horses were reintroduced, starting in South America and working their way up to North America. But of course, horses escape, they're let go, they're released, and these horses then, of course, create wild bands of horses. They are taken up by the, the Native Americans who are then incorporated into Native American cultures. During the French Revolution, there's evidence to suggest that the national studs that had been set up by Louis XIV uh, were banned because horses were seen as being a very aristocratic and very royal thing to have. So all these studs he'd set up to breed his stunning Arabs uh, were basically abolished and destroyed and they weren't set up again until um, Napoleon and uh, he set up the studs and started to breed horses once more for warfare. Marengo was Napoleon's horse. He was an absolutely stunning stallion, fought in a lot of battles, named after the Battle of Marengo. But he was captured at the Battle of Waterloo in 1815. And from then on, uh, he was put to stud, which means they wanted to breed from him. Uh, it didn't work, apparently, uh, but he lived to a ripe old age. He was 38 years old when he died. His skeleton is now in the National Army Museum, minus a hoof. He's gone down in history. World War I had an almost unprecedented death rate of horses. We don't really know specific numbers, but what we can guess, it's anything from hundreds of thousands of horses died to a few million horses died. When the war ended, it was discovered that most of these horses were being sold to French butchers and Belgian butchers as meat and so on. And I think the British people saw that these horses had done their bit and deserved to have a better fate. Churchill at that time wrote to the chief of the army staff demanding that something be done. 
At the end of the First World War, horses started to fall out of fashion. This is because they began to realise that horses were no longer needed at the forefront of battle, that we'd moved on to tanks, that the guns were bigger, that horses couldn't deal with trenches and with barbed wire. And that was the way that warfare was happening in 1918. So in the interwar years, the army turns to mechanisation in a very large way. I believe that the use of horses in warfare uh, and the relationship with men has been incredibly important right the way throughout history. We have diaries and letters which nearly always mention the horse in them. In the First World War, men would be risking their lives to save horses. Um, I met somebody recently who dis was describing their grandfather having to rescue horses uh, that had been sheltering in a wood in France and the Germans recognised that they were there and started shelling the wood and he ran into the wood to release these horses. You read accounts of people who have gone to war and they talk about their horses as their partners. So the horse would do what the rider wanted but also would take care of the rider like the rider would take care of the horse in this mutual partnership through adversity.